بس هذاك عبد Hello, I'm Henry and welcome to Field Test. This is the Canyon Lux. Now it's a bike that has been a staple of the brand's range and in recent years, the World Cup podium as well. The 29 inch wheel bike certainly has a racing reputation, but this isn't just the standard Lux. No, this is the new 110 mm travel Canyon Lux trail. But how much difference can one word really make? And what happens when it goes against bikes that don't have the same racing pedigree. The Lux Trail features a brand new front triangle bolted on to the same rear end. Now it has more rear travel thanks to a change in the shock stroke, and it also is paired to a 120mm fork. A combination of the new front triangle as well as the longer fork mean it is drastically slacker than the standard Lux. There are still telltale signs of its XC racing lineage though, with a rotation limiting headset, as well as the ability to hold two water bottles inside the front triangle. The bike features a huge insertion depth and there's fully internal cabling with rubber grommets. Under Mathieu van der Poel, the Lux has been responsible for smuggling more budgies than a black market parakeet purveyor. And that XC heritage is still felt on the trail version. It's actually one of the steeper bikes on test with a 67.5 degree head angle paired to a 74.5 degree seat tube angle. The suspension system on the Lux is targeted at that typical XC crowd and is designed to be very light. In fact, the rear end uses its travel with a flexing system. That means it saves weight on any hardware and bearings and all the associated gubbins you need when you put a pivot in the rear triangle. Our test bike came equipped with a 120 mm travel RockShox SID fork, which features the new slim down charger damper. Now that is paired to a 55 mm stroke standard eyelet RockShox Deluxe Ultimate rear shock. So we've come to Pemberton, where we've been trying to avoid the rain and I've been trying to avoid Michael Levy's obsession with UFO documentaries every single night. It's just too much. But how does the Canyon Lux compare? Well, let's find out. Okay, those are all the details on the Canyon Lux Trail C of 8. And let's get into the ride impressions. And of course, we'll start with climbing. Henry, how's your time climbing on the Canyon? Um, the Canyon is a strange bike in some ways, and I think it it's held back by a strange way to size the bike. So our medium had a quite a long effective top tube and a reach of 460 millimeters, and it's the only bike on the whole test that we're riding a medium in. The large would have had a top tube, effective top tube of 650 millimeters, and it becomes a big old bike. So this thing seated, its effective top tube is actually pretty good. I think it's around 625 or something like that. And you can, you know, manipulate your weight. It's not so bad. It's not the most, it's a strange bike to ride. It's not the most grippy bike. It's not the most efficient bike. It's not the lightest bike, but it's also, it seems to have all of its design cues pointing towards that's what it should be. And it doesn't really deliver. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to that effective top tube. That all comes back to that seat tube angle, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. we definitely have some things to talk about with that seat tube on this bike. But the seat tube angle, Henry, what did you think of that? I thought the seat tube angle, well, what the mystery behind this bike is that it's actually a new front triangle paired up to the pre-existing Lux rear triangle. Yeah. They changed the stroke length to get up to 110 mil travel at the back. So they kind of, <laughs> they've kind of given this bike the down country treatment or the trail treatment and not really done all too much with it. Like it's not that much slacker, it's not too much steeper, but what they did do is they added 30 mils of reach per size. Mm -hmm. So suddenly what you think you know about how this bike's gonna fit goes out the window. I tried riding a large and it, I'm six foot and it was very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. This medium is better. Let's talk about how this thing climbs. I mean, we definitely have some criticisms, but it's efficient though, Henry, and the position that it puts you in. It's not just about, you know, the bike felt okay out the saddle, I definitely see no place for a lockout to improve this bike for me and the trails I ride. Maybe if you're on a long graded cycle path, mm -hmm. potentially, but it just felt like a really confused bike. Yeah, I'm gonna defend the bike a little bit here, Henry. This whole like made up down country thing, mm -hmm. 
I mean, if we look at these bikes that we have here, it's a pretty wide spectrum of bikes. Mm -hmm. And it's clear that Canyon and the Santa Cruz, the Blur that yes. we also have, they definitely lean more towards their cross country roots. Yes. And I think that makes, I mean, very clearly, it means that the bike isn't quite as capable. Now there's some fundamental issues with this frame, Henry, like you mentioned, the C2 blank and the C2 bangle, I'm just scratching my head about. But on the other hand, I would argue that there are a lot of places in the world where a bike like this might be something that would suit a lot of riders. Speaking of capable, we should probably move into the descending section. Yeah. Sounds like it's kind of middle of the road, not the best climber. Actually, we didn't mention the weight too much yet. It's not the lightest bike either, right? It looks light when you, you know, from a distance, it looks, oh, that looks like a light cross country <laughs> bike, but on scale. Yeah, it's the second heaviest bike on test. And the strange thing about it is it's this weird contradiction where there's so much about this bike that should prioritize climbing, mm -hmm. but some spec choices that just don't make sense. And you come onto descending and there are seen like some spec choices that seem to, actively choose to hold you back. I think I know where you're going with this, Henry. So what Canyon's done here is that the seat tube, how long is the seat tube? I believe it? it's 465 for it, a medium. It's 465 millimeters long for a medium, which is 20 something millimeters too long, Casimir. And then it has a 150 mil dropper 125 seat 125 mil dropper seat post. Mm -hmm. Let's just say that you can get the seat out of the way if that was possible. Mm -hmm. How does the bike handle on those descents? Uh, it's very cross country focused for sure. Uh, when you're in the saddle covering ground, say on like rolling terrain, it definitely puts you in a position that you want to be on the gas. You know, it's flattish handlebar, a little bit longer position, of course, like you want to be pedaling hard and the harder you pedal, the better the bike feels. But Henry, what happens when the train goes from this <laughs> to this? It's a bike, I wouldn't say it's particularly comfortable to ride. It's, yeah. it's probably the most fatiguing of the bikes. And it also, it bottoms out a lot but you don't want to go any higher spring rate because comfort is already yeah. so heavily on your mind. How much sag were you running? I think off the top of my head, I think it's been around 23 or 24%. Yeah. And I'm bottoming out like often and hard. Yeah. And um, it seems like if that is going to be the case and you can be bottoming out a lot, then I like a bit of comfort. And like yeah. I said, I think there's so many things about this bike and even the silhouette of them, the Santa Cruz and the Canyon don't look that dissimilar, mm -hmm. but the Santa Cruz manages to, to hold on to so many traits that it feels like the Canyon should have been aiming for. Yeah, Henry, you touched on something there, the rear suspension. We're seeing companies come out with 100 millimeter, 120 millimeter bikes that are letting you run a lot of sag. They're pedaling well, they're not bottoming out. They're giving you a lot of support. Like they're squeezing a hell of a lot into like a little tiny thing. But that's, as you've said, that's definitely not the case with the Canyon. No, and I wonder if it's maybe the hangover of using the same rear triangle as the standard looks and just changing the stroke on the shock. I mean, it's not all doom and gloom. This wasn't the slowest bike on test. Thanks to the quirks, we'll call it, of live valve, have saved any blushes from Canyon. And there's the Santa Cruz and the times were very similar. Let's move on to some component specs. You know, this is a down country bike, but maybe a little confused down country bike. What stood out as good, bad, anything? I think the first thing we have to talk about is the SID that's on the front of the bike. We've all been impressed with SIDs in the past, but we've all ridden SIDs that have bushing play. Uh, we've seen a couple of them over the last, well, more than a couple over the last year since they've been released. And we have two more of them here at the field test, including the one on the front of the Canyon. So it feels like a loose headset. It's a warranty issue. Um, but it's still annoying and you're still gonna have to send it away and get it fixed. Something I did like about the Canyon, and speaking of the Trek, is the rotation limiting uh, component in the headset, I think is a far better execution than yeah. the block. Um, I, I think that was actually way better. And also it does have a really, really tidy chain device. I think it's about seven grams. There's no reason not to have it on there. It's really yeah. well executed and it's really smart. Yeah. Henry, what about the brakes? I'm gonna defend the brakes, but I know that you are not. You know, the brakes are too small and it's just not worth the weight saving. Get rid of the remote lockout. Do you want, for my money, I'd say get rid of the AXS axis mm -hmm. and uh, put on bigger brakes. Why deny one of the simple pleasures in life of riding a bicycle fast downhill with brakes that are scary? So I will admit that <laughs> yes, the two piston level brakes, they're not great. Mm. There's there's not a ton of power, but also Henry, we're coming, we're getting on and off bikes. Some of these bikes have four piston XT brakes that we're mm. riding, and then we're getting on two piston levels 
they're not meant to compete with those four piston XT brakes. It's a different thing. And we've already said that this bike comes from a more cross country point of view. We talked about some of the spec choices on this bike, but let's talk about some of the other models and see if any pose a good value, some that you put should maybe potentially avoid. what do you find? I think the 4000 Lux Trail with the SLX looks like a really good bike. $4,000, you get the same frame and Fox Performance, and it looks really good. A good SLX. bike or more value? I it's think you mean more value, value on the same bike. <laughs> yeah, um, our bike was the CF8, and even that actually represents pretty good value at 6,300, and you could go to 7,000 US dollars, which is a lot of money, but you would get the top line bike, which does have a pretty impressive spec. Yeah. We've touched on a few of the pros and cons already, but let's break them down. So for you, what are the pros of the Canyon? All right, you know me, Kaz. I like to be cheerful oh, and positive. Mr. Happy. Yeah, so obviously the Canyon has some shortcomings here, but there are many places in the world where this could be a great bike and many riders. So if you're not somebody who needs to ride the steep things or you don't care, how fast you're going on the descent, you just want to cover a lot of ground, well, then it might be an option that works for you. Listen, I think it's good value. However, I think the geometry has some strange dimensions in there. I think there are some spec choices, which again, I would, I, I've questioned, I, I don't quite understand. And I think the bike itself doesn't really, even if we're looking at the more efficient XC orientated bikes, it, it can't really stack up to anything like the Santa Cruz, except in terms of value. And that brings us to our final point. Who is this bike for? It seems like a bit of a confused bike. So who's the ideal rider? Well, I think I summed it up pretty good in the pros. Again, it's just somebody who's not concerned with pushing the limits on the descents. If you're somebody who you think about hitting that corner harder than the last time, or you know maybe there's some small jumps on the trails that you like, that kind of thing. This isn't an ideal bike for that, but if those things aren't on your list of to-dos, then I don't see why this bike couldn't work for you. I think, yeah, it's somebody that definitely has pedaling in mind. I think it's probably more suited, and it sounds a bit silly, but to an off-road cyclist rather than a mountain biker. It's got the two water bottles. It's, you know, if you weren't demanding bottom out resistance, you could probably want a slightly softer, make it a bit more comfortable, make use of that beautiful lockout and you'd be away. Savage I think people that want to come cover some miles, your off-road bicyclists, mm -hmm. they're in for a treat. Yeah. So there you go. This sounds like this is actually the Canyon Lux XC ATB. Yeah, I would say yeah. so. <laughs> there you go. Heavens, new categories. People yeah, exactly. are pissed off, man. <laughs> <laughs> new categories all the time. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe so you can stay up to date on all the latest field test content. We've got a bunch more coming and we'll see you next time.